Hello and welcome to the Blender Basics video series. These videos are designed to accompany the chapters found in the Blender Basics tutorial book and not as a replacement. So if you don't have the book, head over to www.cdschools.org slash Blender Basics to download a free copy. This video will focus on Chapter 3, Creating and Editing Objects, Part A. If you uh, take a look here as we go through, here's the chapter. It's a pretty long one, so we're going to break it up into a couple of segments. And it has some multiple activities in because this is a big chapter to start to master and become good with uh, before you can move on in Blender. So if we go over to a uh, fresh Blender scene, first thing we have is remember when you start a Blender scene, you have a cube, you have a lamp, and you have a camera. You always start out in a user perspective view. The very first thing I always do is hit number five on the number pad to switch myself to an orthographic view. Um, first time students are always trying to work in a perspective spun view. They think they're putting something in a good location and they find out it's five miles behind where they wanted it to go or five miles in front of it. So it's always good to work and get used to working in an orthographic view and always work in a principal view, a number seven a number one or a number three for top, front, and side view with the number pad. So it's always good to place things like that. So let's, uh, let's start talking about actually adding objects in Blender and working with our viewports. First thing we need to focus on is something called edit mode and object mode in Blender. The very first time I downloaded Blender and tried it out, it was very confusing because when you added an object back then, it automatically came in in what they call edit mode, meaning you were editing that object. And then whenever you tried to create a new object, it would automatically be joined to that first object. That was very confusing and eventually they, uh, they changed it so when you create new objects, they come in in object mode now. So here's the difference. You change edit mode and object mode down here on the bottom of your bar. So right there would be object mode and there's edit mode. I'll ignore all the other ones for now. So there would be edit mode and when you're in edit mode, you can select various parts of that cube now. So we have three parts to a cube. We have things called a vertex, which is a corner dot. We have a thing called an edge, which would be the line that connects the vertices. And then you also have a face. And you can toggle between what you're selecting. By default, you're selecting vertices. If you go down here to your toolbar, and you only see it when you're in edit mode. When you're in object mode, you don't see that option. So when I'm in edit mode, I see vertex select. I have edge select now where I'm selecting an edge. And I have face select where I can select by faces. And we'll go back to vertex select. So you have a bunch of different ways that you can select various things. You just have to remember edit mode and object mode. Do not create new objects while you are in edit mode for the thing that you're currently working on previously. You can also toggle between edit mode and object mode with the tab key on your keyboard. So there would be object mode with the tab key. There's edit mode with the tab key. Getting to know ta uh, key commands in Blender is a very, very beneficial thing. It will really improve your workflow. So you can change edit mode to object mode down here, or you can just hit the tab key on your keyboard to get used to it. I would recommend downloading the, uh, the first chapter where you have a list of key commands in Blender and try to get to know them as, as much as you can. You know, you, the more you use them, the more comfortable you'll become with them. So we have some basic, basic commands here to work with. Now, when we wanted to add other objects, and again, I'm in object mode, wherever the 3D bullseye is located, that is where the next object will go that you create. So if you wanted to put, say, a UV sphere directly above this cube, you want to make sure that that's directly above the cube. If I, cl I click there, it looks like it's above the cube. But if I go to a number seven view, you'll notice it's a little off center. If I go to a number one, a front view, it's off center there. And there it is in the number three, a side view. So, you know, it's always good to get used to working in multiple principal views so you can see how things are going to look. And I'm just toggling between seven, one, and three to check to see where that's at. Now I'm holding down my mouse wheel to rotate around. So, several ways to add new objects in Blender. So in the tool shelf in the Create tab over here, you have a list of all of your primitive objects that you can add. Now right now you'll see there are a lot of other things like curves and lamps and actually adding text, armatures or skeletons. We're only going to start working with meshes. That's all we're going to focus on right now until we get used to working with that. And you'll see that there are a lot of different things you can create. You can create planes, cubes, circles. 
UV spheres, lycospheres, the difference between the two. A UV sphere is going to have be made up in segments like uh, latitude and longitude of the globe. Lycospheres are going to be triangles like Epcot Center. Cylinders, cones, a torus. Everybody loves the monkey head. That is a very typical thing in Blender. So uh, we're, we're going to add a UV sphere to the top. So I could click here and that would add an object for me. Okay, I'm going to hit Control Z to undo it. Another way we could do that is using our key commands, we could use Shift A to add, which will pop up a shortcut menu and you'll actually see more things in here. Now I may have more things turned on than you would because these are all additional uh, mesh objects that you can add through the add-on menu in the preferences. So again, look at chapter one and you might want to turn a few of those on. They're nice to work with. But we're just going to work on primitive meshes. And another way is in this, in that add-on menu, if you added the dynamic space bar, then what you're going to get is an add object menu this way, which is the one I like to use. And then you can add the UV sphere this way. Okay, so we've added that object. Now we've talked about trying to position that 3D cursor in an exact location. There's a lot of ways to do that. If I go back to the top tools button, right here would be a way to set the origin of an object to where the 3D cursor is or its geometry. Another way to snap that 3D cursor someplace is to hit the Shift S key on your keyboard. Shift S. And then you can either snap it to the cursor, to the grid. There are a lot of different things you can experiment with in here to try to get that cursor to snap to different locations. When you add a new object, you'll notice down here on the bottom half of the toolbar or on the tool shelf, you'll, um, you'll see some different things that control the shape of the mesh. Um, now, it's not working right now. Well, it is actually working right now. If I would have done another command between adding it and messing with the settings of that UV sphere, it wouldn't allow me to do it. So you can actually determine how many segments you want, like say 32 segments and 32 rings would actually give me a um, pretty detailed sphere. Okay, you can improve the quality of the sphere that way using those various tools. So how do we move stuff around in 3D space? You've got a couple different ways to do this. The traditional way is to use keyboard commands. So if you wanted to move something, you would use the G key. I like to think of grabbing hold of something. So if I just hit the G key on my keyboard, I can move that object around. If I want to lock that object on an axis as I work, like X, Y, or Z, while I hit the G key, and again, my finger is not on the key, you just tap it once, and I'm moving it around with my mouse. If I hit X, Y, or Z, I will lock it on that axis. So there I locked it on the Z, here I locked it on the Y, and here I locked it on the X. So you can lock things on various axes that way to make it work better. So that was the G key to move it, and if I want to move it on a specific axis, I can type X, Y, or Z, and I'll move it on that axis. If I wanted to rotate something, I'm going to pick the cube this time with my right mouse button. If I type R to rotate, I'm rotating the cube. Okay, and again, R for rotate, G to grab and move, and again, if I hit X, Y, or Z, I will rotate it on an X, Y, or Z axis. X, Y, or Z. Okay, and the last one is, let's say I wanted to resize something with a scale key. So I'm going to hit S for scale, and now you're scaling an object. And again, if I want to scale on a specific axis, I could type in X or Y or Z. So there would be the Y, there would be the X, there would be the Z. So you can scale things that way. So G to move, R to rotate, S to scale your three main manipulators that you need to work with in Blender. There are other ways to do it. You'll notice that there's this really nice looking blue, green, red arrow on my object when I select it. And if I just grab hold of one of those arrows, I can actually move on the axis that represents the arrow. If I grab in the middle of that small white circle, then I can move it freely. And again, I don't have to hit a key for that. This is called a transform widget. Uh, the transform widgets are controlled down here at the bottom of your 3D view menu. And you can turn the widgets on and off with this inverted Y, um, red, green, blue, Y. That turns the widgets on and off. Most of the time I don't use the widgets, I just keep them turned off. But there are different widgets that you can use. So right now we're on the 
um, translate one, which basically is a fancy term for moving. And if you hover over top of the button, it will tell you what it is. So that's the translate would be move. The next one over is a rotate. So if I do a rotate and I grab hold of one of those axes, I can actually rotate on the axis that's selected. And the next one over is scale. So I can scale something by grabbing one of those dots. Now after something's been rotated, so let's say I rotate this cube a little bit, and then I go to scale. If you notice the arrows don't match the angle of the cube anymore because it's on a global setting, meaning it's following the global X, Y, and Z. I can change how the widgets are working here to say to turn it to local or normal. And normal will actually rotate with the object as I go. So again, they're just some useful tools that are there. And the more of these you um, try out and, and use often, the more comfortable you'll, becoming, you'll become with them. So you've got the main modifiers here that you need to work with. The very first activity is for you to build some type of sculpture using at least one of every mesh. So this is where we're going to end this chapter to let you play around with using this various commands.